Hello everybody, my name is Gothic Lord UK. Today we're doing something a little different in Bellatro. There has been various threads of discussion online in various places about how much the game is skill versus how much it's luck versus how much is RNG dependent. And a user over on the Bellatro subreddit was having trouble getting past the kind of mid to three quarters length part of the game and wasn't having much success after about 10 hours. So what we're gonna do is we are going to go to a brand new save file uh, and we're going to call it over explain create that and so we have a brand new save that doesn't have anything discovered anything unlocked just the brand new user experience we're going to play we're going to take a seeded run and we're going to play the seed of the game that they had played and not succeeded with so 9 f 8F P6VD. I screenshotted it so I couldn't copy paste it. So we're going to play this and I'm going to go through every thought that I have along the way to try and give myself the best success and what my thought processes are with that along the way. So immediately we are here on the opening blind selection. We can fight this blind. It will take 300 points to win. We'll get some money. Or we can skip and double our $4 to $8. Right now, we don't have any other upgrades or any extra benefits to the cards we play. So we are going to select the blind to play because this is going to be easier than doing anything else. The thing that we want to do right now is to try and win by only playing one hand because we get one additional dollar for every spare hand we have at the end of the round. To do that, we need to play either a reasonably strong flush, a reasonably strong full house, or a reasonably strong straight of queen or bet queen high or better. Right now, we have two pair, queens and nines. We ignore the threes because they won't really score us enough points to get to where we need to be. We also have king, queen, and nine of hearts. And of course, our deck starts out as a standard 52 card deck on most of the decks that you can play within the game. So now we have a decision. We have four discards. We have three as standard plus one additional as the bonus feature of the red deck. We could either discard like this and look for two more hearts. We could discard like this and look for any of the queens or nines left. Or we could discard like this and try and find a jack and a ten to make the straight. There are two queens and two nines that would make our hand. But there are... 10 hearts that would make our hand. So I'm going to discard these five cards and look for some hearts to go along with these because these all score together 29 chips already towards a flush. Now, if we sort by suit, we can find we did get the eight of hearts and that is one step closer to what we need. However, serendipitously, we now have everything that we need for the Broadway straight. That is Ace, King, Queen, Jack, 10 is a straight. That's 30 times four base, plus the extra chips each of these cards gives. And so I know that if I play that, I will get more than 300 points, which means I will get the $3 from beating the blind and three extra dollars for having three hands remaining. So I cash out my $6 and we enter the first shop. Now I should say I'm playing on the 1.0.1 uh, update of the game. I don't know if the other user was, but that is what I'm on right now. We can take this guy here, plus 80 chips if the played hand contains two pair, or this guy here. This joker gains plus three molt when any booster pack is skipped, currently plus zero molt. There's a voucher that gives plus one extra discard for the cost of $10, a buffoon pack that gives us one of two joker cards or a mega arcana pack that lets us pick two of up to five tarot cards to be used immediately so the thing that i want most right now is some extra plus malt because that's going to make it easier to get through the first couple of blinds now unfortunately i can't afford i can't afford to buy this and this for 13 dollars because i would because then i could take the plus three for skipping this after taking one of the two cards because you don't have to take the both that you're offered. Um, so if I buy this, it won't have any multiplier in it. I could buy this and skip it if the Joker inside is bad or I could buy it and take it if there's something good inside. But I can't do this 
before this. So I'm going to buy red card. Leaves me on $5. Then I'm going to buy this buffoon pack. We get scary face and splash. Played face cards give plus 30 chips when scored. And every played card counts in scoring. Now, neither of these are terrible, but they don't offer me plus malt, which is what I want to find most. So because we took red card first, we can now skip this pack. This is worth plus three malt to me. And with that, we will continue. The voucher will be here until the boss blind is beaten and it changes. So if you have some money, you can wait to purchase this until after the big blind. So this would give us a free uncommon joker, but right now I want the $4 from defeating the blind and any extra hands we have remaining. So what do we have here? We have king, blank in the queen, jack 10, blank in the nine, eight, seven, blank in the six, five, four, three. So the nine is the only thing that we could find to make a straight if we only wanted one card to make that straight. Otherwise, we could draw to three hearts or three spades. I think right here, I'm going to draw to the nine by discarding four cards. We don't find it. We now have four spades. So instead of going for that nine any further, we know that there are still six spades in the deck. We're holding four of them. We check by suits. We're still missing one spade that we need. We're still missing one spade that we need. We haven't made a straight yet. And we're still missing one spade that we'd need. So we now have to start playing cards because we don't have any discards left. Fortunately, we do have a pair of kings, which is at least something. That's 150, so we're exactly one third of the way to where we want to be. We now have, though, five spades. So playing that should be plenty enough points to get us that was 504 which would have won in one hand if we had made that flush more soon now we have seven dollars we could take this guy plus two chips for each remaining card in deck currently 104 but of course you'll draw cards at the start of the round there's this guy adds double the rank of the lowest ranked card held in hand to your multiplier we could buy a jumbo standard pack that has one of five playing cards in it a jumbo spectral pack that has one of four spectral cards and we cannot afford this voucher still mainly my priority is getting more base multiplier i'm probably not going to want to fuel red card into the late game so i'm going to take raised fist here adds double the rank of the lowest ranked card held in hand to multiplier now the goad is the boss all spade cards are debuffed so a spade card won't trigger the ability of raised fist if the spade is the lowest card so if i play six six high right now seven is the lowest card it's debuffed it can't communicate to raised fist so nothing would happen which is unideal um we don't probably want to focus on playing the spades because they're not going to do any extra value for us so i think i'm going to discard and look for some more hearts here now, I didn't find many more hearts, but we do now have a full house in 888 Queen Queen. Nine is the lowest card in hand. It will double to plus 18 multiplier, plus the three from the red card. That should be plenty to keep us going here. 1900 points. Keep in mind that number because we can use that as a kind of guesstimation on how things are gonna go against the next blind. This is the egg, gains $3 of sell value at the end of the round. It costs four. And so if we buy that now, it sells for two. But as soon as we get through one round, we'll have made a profit with the egg. Um, I'm not gonna take anything else here because what I would like to do is start to try and get this number for my money up to over $25 if I can. That's because we get $1 of interest on every $5 we hold up to $25. And I think Raised Fist is going to be plenty enough to get us through the next blind or two. So we need 800 to beat this blind. We know that we just scored 1900 with a reasonable full house. And all of these blinds are smaller than that number. So we can just hold our money and save. Now for this, we would get $3 plus $1 of interest, which is $4, plus one for each remaining hand, which if we're lucky would be $3. So three, four, five, six, seven dollars, or 
If we skip this blind, we can get $25 after defeating the boss blind. I think this investment is worth doing because we will then cap out our interest after the boss and we can start spending that interest rather than having to spend our capital. So we're going to skip that, we're going to get nothing, but we know a reasonable full house will score the 1200 we need. Now, we don't have to start with a full house because right in front of us here we have King, Queen, Jack, 10, 9, which is a reasonably respectful hand. I would like the smallest card in hand to be larger than 5 because Raised Fist previously went on a 9, which gave us plus 18. So we have 4 discards to try and hold a card that is higher than 7 as our smallest card. That will do nicely. We don't... Oh, we do have a full house, so... We can either play 9, 10, Jack, Queen, King. This would be 30 times 4 plus the rest of the chips, which is 49. And we will get 20 molt from that. Or we can play this full house, which will get 40 times 4. And we'll get 18 molt from that. Uh, 40 times 4. Or 30 times 4. The chips are about the same. The 4 is about the same. We get 2 extra for this which is less than the difference between three and four. So I will do the straight instead of the full house. We also then retain a pair for a future hand if we need it. So playing this. And that is 2,100 points, which we know is about what we expected. We get $8. Now we have this guy, which has a foil addition on it which gives us plus 50 chips every time we go through a scoring section of a round. Right now, we don't have any additional chips, and so something like this would be good because ultimately our score each hand is a multiplication of our chips times our malt. And we've got a good amount of malt here, but we don't have any chips. With $14 and 25 to come, I'm happy to do this. Now, we can, we can hold ultimately five jokers, and that is four out of five, but of course we can sell these when it's beneficial to do so. We know we're gonna get $25 after we defeat the boss blind, and we can check those up here. The boss blind is next, so we don't really need to worry about holding this $8. So I will buy a Jumbo Arcana pack here. It's gonna offer us five tarot cards we can use to manipulate our deck in some way. So we can make a card wild, and then it will be all four suits. We can double our $2 to $4, which is not very ideal right now. We can convert three cards into clubs. We can destroy two cards permanently, or we could take a one in four chance to upgrade one of these cards. Now, I don't love the one in four chance to upgrade something right now because I intend to sell this egg, and if I sell the egg after it gets the enhancement, I'm not gaining any benefit from that enhancement. We could make clubs and try and go for club flushes. We haven't seen the boss that deals with clubs and debuffing them yet. We saw the goad earlier, which dealt with spades, which is good knowledge because it means we can lean into spades knowing we're not going to see that boss again. $2 is definitely not worth doing. A wild card is fine, and destroying two cards is not the worst thing because a thinner deck means it, you're more likely to draw the things that you want to find. So I think my real decision is here is, do I take five... Well, these three fives and make them all clubs so i'd then have four five of clubs or do i delete two random cards so i don't see them anymore i think we'll go for the clubs here it'll make it slightly easier to play flushes which are one of the stronger hands to play and now we're going up against the psychic we must play five cards if we want to score with our hand so we have ace king queen jack in the broadway cards we have three hearts, but I know that I want to get rid of these small cards because I want Raise Fist to produce a big number for me. So I'm going to discard these three and just see if I can find something else higher to work with. There's two of those five of clubs. Now, of course, if I play these, then the smallest card remaining in my hand would be this jack. And right now we have four clubs. So I could happily discard a few cards to look for an additional club and we find one in this ace so if we play this club flush the queen is the smallest thing in hand which will be plus 20 multiplier plus the three from red card plus the 50 chips from green joker we know a strong hand right now scores us around 2100 chips but it'll be much larger thanks to the foil on this green joker 
So that's 3,300 chips. Points. Now we get the $25 from this tag that we took earlier. So we have $35, which is lots to work with. This guy increases the score on two of our cards to be 30 chips extra. This guy is 100 extra chips if your hand contains a straight. This has one of three standard playing cards to choose from. But the Mega Celestial pack here is two of five planet cards. So let's grab that. So we can upgrade four of a kind, full house, flush, high card, and trips. Because we've already made more clubs here, I'm going to upgrade the flush. And because I have red card here, I could take a second planet card, but if I skip, I get three more multiplier there. So I get the best of both worlds. I am going to take this Hierophant card. We can also take a peek at what's to come. So the small blind is 2,000 points, the big blind is 3,000 points, the boss blind is 4,000 points. Nothing there that is too worrying. And I'm just going to hold on to my $24. We'll get $4 of interest from that back, plus the rest. Now, the game has just given us an out here in that we can simply play this full house. The jack is our smallest card, which will be 20 multiplier. We don't need to do anything here special. We can hold the Hierophant until there's a cause for us to use it where we're a bit more concerned about the strength of our holdings. The Emperor creates two tarot cards, which is a nice thing to have. And we have $34 here, so I'm reasonably comfortable spending money down to $25 because that's the cap for our interest. So we'll always get $5 back after that. So I'm going to buy this Emperor, but not use it yet, because it will create two tarot cards, and I only have two slots here, so I need to use the Hierophant before I use the Emperor. Then I will upgrade my full house as well, as kind of a backup hand. If we can't make a flush, we might make a full house. And then if I buy either of these, we will drop below that $25 marker, so we won't do that yet. And we're just going to jump into the next blind. So lots of small stuff here. We have three, four, five, six... If we had a 7 or a 2, we could make a straight. So I'm going to keep the king, because that's a nice high card for raised fist. And discard 3. We're going to ignore the effect of green joker here for a minute, because I'm not that interested in kind of scaling it up. But we now have that straight, but the 3 is very small. So we're going to discard that and look for a bigger card. The 6 should be fine. So we'll play this straight. The 6 will double to 12. We've got 6 malt here, 50 chips there. In fact, if we were a little bit concerned, we could take our clubs, add an extra 30 chips to each of those, and that should definitely give us enough points to do this in one hand. 3,700 points. Get our $12, and we're back in the shop. Now, Justice turns one card into glass, and we get a two times multiplier when that card is scored, which is very strong. So I will grab that. We still have $37. We can reroll the shop for five. We have $12 over the 25 that we want to kind of hold out on. So I'll roll once, and now we have Luchador. Sell this card to disable the current boss blind. And Ramen, two times multiplier, loses times 0.1 Malt per card discarded. So if we get plus 6 from this, and say plus 12 from that, that would be 18. This would make it plus 36, which is very strong. So we'll take that and keep on moving so we can maintain our $25 of interest. Over to the hook. Now the hook is a little nasty, because it discards two random cards per hand played. So if I use all of my discards, say, looking for a king or a 10 to try and make a full house and I don't find it, I then have to think about playing my other cards and the hook is going to take those away, which is unideal. I also, if it can be helped, don't want to discard things because it's going to make my ramen less effective. So let's see what we can do without necessarily using our discards. Right now, we could just play a pair of fours. Or we could play two pair, fours and tens, keeping the nine, which would be doubled to 18 here, which would then be doubled to 36, plus the rest. I think that is reasonably strong. What I am going to do is 
This nine of clubs, I'm going to use this justice on. I don't intend to score with this nine of clubs right now, but I want the opportunity to make two cards with my justice. And that's very interesting because the tower enhances one selected card into a stone card. A stone card will always be scored and scores 50 chips, no rank or suit. So this eight is a diamond, which I'm not interested in because we're focusing on clubs. So if I use the tower here, I can then go 10, 10, 4, 4, stone card. And when we play this, the nine will double on raised fist. In fact, it got discarded. So the king got doubled, but we're at 8,000 points there because we got all that extra score. The Chariot enhances one card into a Steel card. It's 1.5 times multiplier while that card stays in hand. That sounds pretty good to me. And let's open this Arcana pack that will have five Arcanas in. The Lovers makes a wild card. We've seen that before. The Sun makes three hearts, which I'm not so interested in because I'd rather focus on clubs. We just used a stone card to, or a tower to create a stone card. Temperance will give us the sell value of our jokers, which is currently $27, mostly because this egg has been increasing in value over time. And the Fool will make the most recently used tarot or planet card. Right now, I'm very happy to receive that much extra money, so we will spend 20, or we will gain $27 from that. And so now we have loads of money above that $25 limit. I'm going to take this opportunity and sell this egg for another $17 so that I can buy this card here. Played cards with an even rank give plus four malt when scored. So we'll take that and then this voucher will increase our card shop slots available from two to three. But a side benefit is when we do that, it will restock the shop. So rather than paying $5 to reroll, we can pay $10, we'll get a reroll for free and then we have a bigger shop to work with for the entire future of our game. Until, of course, we lose and the whole thing resets. That's part of the game being a roguelike. So we've already leveled up our flushes once. I will do that again by buying and using immediately. It means we can still buy consumables when we don't have room for them necessarily over in the top right corner. I'm not necessarily too interested in either of these right now, but we have $57. So I'm gonna buy this jumbo standard pack here and see if there's anything really good. Now, the four in glass can be good because it will double our score if we use it. The eight with a red seal will re-trigger if we score with that, which can also be quite good, particularly if we make it glass or if we make it into steel. Now, we want to play our clubs and not play our other cards. Steel cards are beneficial for us when we're holding them in our hand rather than them being in the played hand. And if it has a red seal, it will do that twice. So uh, I can't use the chariot right now, but I can add this to my deck and we can look for it later. A reroll here gives us um, one of the most powerful cards in the game. Each played card with a club suit gives you 1.5 times multiplier when scored, and then that will change at the end of every round. I'm not going to take this because it basically trivializes a lot of the game ahead. So instead, I will not take it and try and use more basic stuff to work towards an anti-8 victory if we can. Let's roll once more. Um, creates a tarot card if the hand if hand is played with four dollars or less. That can be very strong, but right now I don't want to give up my money. I'd rather work with interest. This is a very strong joker if you're prepared to play with it, but I'm going to keep things a little more simple. This guy here is plus, plus 30 chips for each discard remaining. Now, at the top of the episode, we learned that we're using the red deck, so that gives us one additional discard. So that's four discards times 30 chips is 120 additional chips, which is a lot. If we use our discards each hand, this number will get lower. However, Raman incentivizes us not to use our discards. So because this is a chip-based joker, I'm going to sell Green Joker that's giving us 50 chips here and instead buy this banner that will give us 120 chips so long as we don't use our discards. And then I think I'm pretty happy to move into the next round. The needle is coming up. Play only one hand. That can be very tricky. So we'll see what we can do with that in a minute. 
Now, we have a decision that we can make here. We can either play the small and big blinds and get our interest, go to the shop, do more shopping, and then we're going to come up against the needle where we get one hand and our four discards. But we need to make something good fast to make that viable to us. Alternately, this tag here gives us plus three hand size in the next round. If we make the next round be the needle, we will have an 11 card hand to work with rather than an 8 card hand to work with, which might, might make this an easier proposition for us to tackle. So I'm going to do that. We will take this tag that will give us plus 3 hand size next round. We will take this meteor tag that's going to give us 2 free planet cards. So I'm going to level up my flush. And I'm going to skip again, which will make red card bigger. So that's now at plus 9 molt. And then we come into the needle. So we are going to get to play one hand. We have four discards available, but we'd rather not use them if it can be helped because we want ramen to be big and we want banner to be big. So what is our best play here? Well, we don't have five of any given suit. We don't have a straight. So the best we would have here is probably two pair. But unfortunately, three is not going to be very large when raised when doubled with raised fist. So what else can we do? I think I would like to try and find some clubs. Not only do we have plus 30 chips here, and times two mop there, and our flush is at 80 times 10 already as its base score, I think we could afford to consume some loss in our ramen and our banner to try and find two clubs and make a stronger hand. Well, we didn't. We still have three clubs. Did we back into anything else that might be more applicable? We now have the pair of nines, which is not great. We could make them both glass if we wanted to. Uh, we have a pair of kings as well. So we could discard like this. We keep the three clubs that we have but we also open up ourselves to the possibility that we get a king or a nine back for a full house. We have two kings and two nines still in the deck. Right, we now have five clubs. We have this five and this five, this nine, this 10, this jack, and this queen. The stone card won't be counted for the purposes of raised fist because it's the double, the lowest ranked card and stone cards do not have a rank, so we don't have to worry about that. We definitely want to play this nine because it's got extra malt in it by being glass. We definitely want to play both of these fives because our raised fist is then going to double off of this nine to plus 18 malt. Then we have the 10, the jack and the queen, which are all equal because they give 10 chips each. However, 10 is an even card, which means it will give us plus 4 multiplier when any even rank card is scored. So we play the 10, and we're going to play this jack. Before we do that, we have to think about do we want to use our um, tarot cards right now? And I think this will probably be enough points. I would like to put this chariot onto this red sealed card later if we could, but I see no harm in adding an extra glass here. Now they have a 1 in 4 chance to break and that's just how things go. Regarding the order of our played cards here, the 10 is going to score third and when it scores we will get plus 4 malt. Then the glass will score which means it will 2x the malt that came from the 10 being even. Then the jack will 2 times that then we will get our bonuses across the top. Thirty-two thousand comfortably across, and neither of our glass cards broke. Now, death is a wonderful tarot card. Select two cards and convert the left card into the right card. So we can convert any card we want into another card. So we will buy that. Midas Mask, all played face cards become gold when scored. I'm not very interested in right now. 
and this joker gains plus four chips if the played hand contains exactly four cards. Well, we're working with flushes largely right now, which require five cards, so this is not of interest to me. We have more than $25, so we could open these packs. Um, I think I'm most interested in this eight of clubs in steel. Steel is what chariot makes, and it would give us a 1.5 times multiplier if I'm holding it, but it gives me the flexibility in also playing it as part of my flushes. And in this one, we could take a wild seven in clubs, but I don't love that. We could take this blue seal, and if this is in hand when we finish a round by playing a flush, it will make a card that upgrades our flush. But instead, I'm going to instead make red card bigger by skipping here. Then if I re-rolled down to $25 by using a $5 re-roll, I wouldn't want to buy anything that comes because that would drop me below $25. So we're going to jump into the next round. The arm is our boss here. Decreases the level of the played poker hand. Is not very fun if we play our full houses or our flushes. So we'll keep that in mind. But right now, I think I'm happy to press on. So we've got aces and eights. The eights are both even, so they'll score on even Steven. So rather than using my discards, which will make Banner and Ramen worse, I'm going to play this pair of eights. The eights will both get score from even Steven. Our Banner will produce 130 chips for all of our discard, and then we get 20 malt from raised fist, 12 from red card, and then our entire multiplier will be times by 1.88. And that was 11,528 points. We still get our three extra dollars for having three spare hands. Let me just take a sip of my drink. Okay. We have two boosters here. I don't mind looking at both of these. The buffoon pack, this guy, gets you $4 at the end of each round. This guy increases your hand size by a bit. I don't think any of those are necessarily much more needed than what we have, but we can then skip. We get more value into red card. And the Arcana pack. We don't see this red eight that we're looking for here, or the red sealed eight. But we can use this justice to make another card into... Oh, sorry, we can use this fool to copy the effect of another card or rather create a copy of another card. So if I were to make this ace into steel by using the chariot, I could then make another chariot. So what options do we have here? I could make any of this stuff into a club with death, and then the fool would make another copy of it, of death. But I think what we could do here is get a bit extra tricky. This seven can get a steel card. Then this 10, actually the 10 is even, so that might be more useful. Uh, this Jack can become a seven of clubs with the death card. And then I can make myself another death card. Uh, we could roll the shop, but I don't feel any pressing need to, so we'll go into the big blind here. Now, that is the red seal card that I was hoping to save to be used with this eight, or sorry, with the steel card that we used on one of these cards, but that's fine. That's not going to be the end of the world. We have four clubs. I could make another club by making one of these non-clubs into a club. Um, we have a straight though. We can play six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The eight will be the smallest card and score twice. Uh, or twice its multiplier will be scored on raised fist. This eight will give us eight chips twice because it will re trigger. And because it is even, it will trigger even Steven twice. And then we get to maintain our discards and all the rest. And then this guy will give us 1.5 times our multiplier after the hand cards have scored. So there is 26,000 points. Good going. Get all of our cash. We have $45. There's a fool card here. We can't use it because we used a fool most recently to make this death card. But I can buy it 
use this death card, then use this fool to make another death card, which sounds good to me. Uh, neither of these are things that I'm interested in, so let's open some more packs. Uh, this is interesting because it will trigger twice as a stone card. We could also take a two of clubs, but I think here I'm just going to skip for red card. And this pack as well. Um, a foil jack of diamonds, a glass jack of spades, or a plain nine of clubs. I think I will skip. And now this guy is up to plus 21 molt, and that is bigger than our raised fist can ever be. So that's not bad. Decrease the level of the played poker hand. Now, right now, high card is first level. This version of the boss can no longer reduce the level to zero. There was a previous patch where that could happen, but that is no longer the case. We have four cards to a straight here. We'd need the seven. Now, I'd rather not use my discards, so we have this to give us some extra value. And let's just keep the three hearts. We still have nine hearts in the deck, but we can play this. It will be ace high. The stone card will give us value. We'll get value from banner, 21 malt here, 16 malt here. All of that will be doubled. We might not get 22,000 points, but I think we'll get reasonably close. 13, okay, is more than halfway there. Now, I don't want to de-level my flush, so I could play these hearts. However, I'm incentivized currently not to. So instead, let's play this pair of kings. We know that a high card gave us 13,000 points, so a pair should be a little bit possibly larger than that. 9 will double to 18. There's 11,000 points. We get over the mark. No problems at all. We know that Temperance was really good earlier because we had the egg, but still, it's $3 to purchase it, and we will get $11 in return for an $8 profit, so I will absolutely do that right now. Um, this guy gives you plus three malt when any of our clubs are scored. We currently have 18 clubs, and we're working on kind of playing club flushes, so that might be valid. Let's check who our next boss is. The Serpent, after play or discard, always draw three cards. Well, that won't be a problem. So, let's open this Mega Arcana pack. We can see if there's anything we want to do with these guys. I see the Moon. The Moon can make more clubs for us. But I also know that we have our Death Fool combo here, and this Seven of Steel clubs seems very interesting to me. So I'm going to make this King of Spades into a Seven of Clubs. And then I'm going to make another Death card. And then I'm going to make this Seven of Spades into a Steel, Seven of Clubs. And then we can pick two of these. Um, I'm going to make this Eight of Clubs into Glass. And then I could make some hearts, which we know we don't want to do. I could make two random planet cards. I could make the Eight of Spades and the Deuce of Spades into clubs. Or I could enhance two cards with bonus chips. But I think, again, we're just going to keep juicing up our red card by skipping the second card. Are we more likely to play even cards or clubs? Well, a lot of our clubs are sevens and fives and face cards. So I think I'm going to swap out even Steven for the gluttonous joker. And we could think about taking bull, but I'm not going to overcomplicate things right now. Let's buy this celestial pack. If we can level up flushes, we will. If we can't, we will skip and red joker will go to plus 27. We could reroll once. In fact, we will, and we get a High Priestess, which is going to make those two planet cards. I don't need the money, so I will use both. And then, if we happen to make a full house, or three of a kind, we'll be fine. Neither of these jokers really build our strategy right now. Rerolling $6 would take us under 25 so let's go to the next round. The Serpent is going to be not a problem when we get there, so we'll take this opportunity to try and find more good stuff in the shop. Uh, right here, 
I'm going to play aces and sixes. The two sixes are no longer considered even for the benefit of the card that gave us. They are still, of course, even, but they're not going to get a benefit from the card that was buffing even things. There is one club here, though, and we know that the jack is going to get doubled to 20, which is totally fine by me. So we're 67 points short there. That's not a problem. We can play a second hand. And that one's worth 15,000 more points, and things are okay. Now, $39. I'm not that interested in straight flushes or the other jokers, but I will continue to invest in packs. I could make another Venus, because that was the last card we used to... Uh, last consumable planet or tarot we used. I could destroy two random cards, probably th something like this Queen of Diamonds and this Three of Diamonds or something. We could make more spades. We could make a random Joker card, not that we have room for one, so it won't let us use this because there is no room to do it. But I think right now, with $33, the Hermit will give us 20 more dollars, and I'm totally fine with that. We'll open this standard pack, see if there's anything really interesting. Uh, the King would give us 100, 100 chips for being foil and triggering twice, which is interesting to me. This guy would give plus 10 malt because it's holographic, but none of them are clubs. But I think this king is possibly too good not to take. Now, we're going to re-roll a bit. This voucher here will make our re-rolls cost two less, so let's invest in that. So this now costs $3. Hack. Retriggers each card played as a 2, 3, 4, or 5. Base cards give 30 extra chips, or plus 20 malt when your hand contains 3 or fewer cards. We do have some 2s, 3s, 4s, and 5s of clubs, but not that many compared to the rest of our clubs. Let's reroll once more. I'm going to grab this Lover's card, and it will enable us to turn a card into a wild card. And then if it's a diamond, it would still trigger for Gluttonous Joker as a club. Right here, I would like to play a club flush, so rather than using my discards, which we know we're trying to actively avoid, I'm going to hold three clubs, I'm going to play nine high with the stone card, and that will give us some points. 13,000 is about a third of what we need. We now have four clubs, and we want to play whatever is the smallest card in our hand for the benefit of raised fist. So this four of spades becomes a wild four of spades which means it can now contribute to our flush and the seven of hearts will be a 14x multiplier and there we get loads of points plenty enough for our needs right now this guy is a fun one a one in four chance of each played hand to be upgraded make spades increase the rank of two cards by one is not something that we need to do here because we're mostly focused on making flushes rather than full houses and four of a kinds and things. This steel three is interesting because steel cards are great, but you want to hold the steel card for it to do its thing. But if we're holding a three, we're gonna cripple our scoring with raised fist because this is gonna give us 1.5x our score, but it's only gonna give us plus six on raised fist, which I don't think is great. So happy to skip red joker, a red card is now 30 malt. We'll look at this one as well. No clubs here at all. I think we will skip that. This is now plus 33. We'll roll once. It will keep us above 25. And we'll just see if there's anything really good. And I think a full card is fine. We'll hold on to that. Now the Serpent. After play or discard, always draw three cards. So, we probably want to find either something to make this group of sevens into a full house or something or another club now we know we're going to play these clubs as part of a flush so we could probably just play queen high here and no matter how many cards we play we're going to draw three cards so really playing one card is optimal because when we get three cards back we'll be at 10 over 8 in our hand size and that means we'll have the most options So we now have three sevens. We have two fours. This four is wild. So I think what we can do 
is something like this. The seven will give us 1.5x malt as steel. The six will be double to 12. The nine of glass in clubs will double our score. So all of these three will give us plus 12 in clubs, and then that will go plus three and then double it. Oh, sorry, the doubling happened first. Now, our glass nine did break. That's okay, it's gonna happen sometimes. Uh, this voucher permanently gives us one more discard each round. If our discards are at five, that means Banner is doing plus 30 chips times five rather than times four, which is great. If I buy this right now, I will fall under the interest cap, but this isn't gonna change as we do the small and the big blind. So I'm gonna do the small and big blind first, and then buy the voucher once we know we're going to maintain our position above the interest cap. 35,000 points doesn't look like too much to me. This is kind of an awkward hand because we have these steel cards that we would like to keep a hold of. The wild card can be helpful, but I think I'm just going to do this. Both of the steel cards will add multiplier. The 7 will double to 14, and this will probably be 15,000 or something, 12,000, 12 and a half, that's totally fine. Uh, I'm then very happy just to play this, because this king is going to be our high card. It's going to score twice because it's a red seal. It's lucky, so it has a 1 in 5 chance to give us plus 20 malt, a 1 in 15 chance to give $20, and it will give us 50 chips, and it will do all of that twice. So plus 20 malt the first time. So that's 54,000 points just for that high card king. Now we know that we can buy this voucher without going underneath $25. So we'll maintain our maximum interest. Uh, I could look at a buffoon pack, see if we find anything particularly good. We did not. This is the same thing as this, but for hearts instead of clubs. And this is the guy that gives us plus $4. We know from our peek ahead, we'll having debuffed diamonds coming up so neither of these are interest to me but we can skip and get three more dollars into our red card and buying this spectral pack will take us down to exactly 25 dollars which is fine by me so we can create a copy of a random joker and destroy all our other jokers at this stage late in the game that seems like a horrible idea or we could Sorry, uh, I got interrupted. I can also use this guy to destroy five random cards in our hand and gain $20. But right now, these are all valuable cards to me. And so I don't want to see any of these destroyed. So uh, normally, this is very strong because you destroy five random cards. And if you're not invested in those cards, it means it's easier to find the cards you are invested in and you get $20. But right now, we skip. This guy is now plus 39 malt, which is very chunky. We've got our $25 for interest. We can go into the next round quite comfortably. Uh, we have five clubs. I would rather not risk this one breaking, though. So what can we do? Well, we can play this pair of fours the two fours will both count as clubs. The steel seven will give us 1.5x, and this will give us 14 malt, and everything else will give us a good chunk of score. So that's 20,000, that's not bad. Now we have three pairs in hand. So I think what I'm gonna do is play two pairs, sorry, we have four pairs in hand, but obviously we can only play five cards. I'm going to play the eights and the two kings. This king is a club. These two sevens are both steel. And this guy is our red seal foil card that will trigger twice and give us 120 chips, plus its chance to be lucky. So that's 38,000 points. We are comfortably moving along. Now... This guy is Foil. We saw that earlier on the green joker that we had at the beginning. This one over here, though, is negative. 
which means we can buy it and it will give us plus one joker slot so it won't accommodate in the five of five instead it will put itself into its own new slot and it will give us eight multiplier every time we score with an ace two three five or eight which is very strong so we'll buy that put that over there that takes us underneath the interest cap so i'm not going to spend anything else and now all diamonds are debuffed so we have trip eights we have the wild four is debuffed because the wild card makes it be considered as a diamond as well as the other suits and diamonds are debuffed and so the four is debuffed and cannot be used as a wild card so what would i like to do here well if i could play a full house or something with these eights that wouldn't be bad so i think i'm just going to play this high card here effectively using it as a discard i could discard but i would lose ramen value and banner value and i think we'll be okay with the three cards the three hands that we will have remaining after this uh, or we could play the Jack of the Ten as well and hope to get some of our steel cards and our glass cards and our clubs. So, in fact, I think I will do this. So, that's 17,000. Now, it happens that we have a spade flush here. The three is not very strong, but it is a club. And so, rather than using our discards, I'm going to concede that this three is only going to score us six with raised fist. However, these two eights are going to score on Fibonacci. So this will give us eight molt. And this, being a red seal, will re-trigger and give us 16 molt, which I think is certainly good enough to compensate for the small three that we'll otherwise be holding. Then, of course, we have our big lucky king on the end there. Fifty-eight thousand points gets us over the seventy thousand point line things are good now before we look at all of this stuff we can now go and see which boss we are going to be up against at the end the amber acorn flips and shuffles all joker cards so these are our six joker cards they will be flipped shuffled around and that is a problem for us because we know that ramen is most effective as an x times multiplier on the right hand side because if it were here it would take our base value and times that by 1.88 but it would not double all of the value from red card or raised fist so that's the thing that we have to deal with this guy uncommon jokers each give 1.5 times multiplier times multiplier is great we have one uncommon two uncommons so is there anything that i would give up to get 1.5x multiplier twice. Possibly Gluttonous Joker here. It's only really scoring us 15 malt when we score a flush. Steel Joker gives 0.2 malt for each steel card in your full deck. Right now, we have five steel cards, so this is giving us times two. Ramen is also doing almost effectively that, so they could be swapped out with one another. And this one here gives us plus one malt per tarot card used in this run, currently at plus 18. That is also very strong. So what do I think I want to change about this situation? Well, Raised Fist, at most, can give us plus 20 if it copies a hand that is 10x in hand. This is giving us 18. The Fool will make a tarot card, which is another one, which makes this plus 20. So I think it makes sense to swap those over. I think it also makes sense to drop Gluttonous here and take the baseball card. That puts us at $24, but we are at the last ante of the game. Now you can go endless after beating ante 8, but ante 8 is where you secure your win. So what would i like to do with my last 24 dollars well there's a mega spectral card here pack here and the fool is currently copying the lovers which is not very exciting so we can see if we can do better oh sorry fool can't copy the cards in this this is spectral not tarot is my mistake 
Uh, we've seen this before. Create a copy of a random joker and destroy all other jokers. We don't want that right now. This is add a gold seal to one selected card in your hand. Earn $3 when this card is played and scores. There's this guy here, not discovered. Add foil, holographic, or polychrome effect to one selected card in your hand. Or this guy here converts all cards in hand to a single suit. Now, it would be interesting if these all turned to clubs, because there's only one club here left to lose, which is not bad going. But I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this king, and I'm going to add an extra effect to it. So it now gives us plus 10 multiplier. And then I could do one of these, but I'm going to skip. That puts more value into red card. That gives us more value from baseball card, which gives us more value from ramen. The 2x malt on here is a little more stable than the 1.8 malt here. But I would like to open this Arcana pack for the Fool. So let's do that first, because we might get economy cards, like Temperance. So would I like $20, or would I like to make a bunch of extra stuff? I guess I'm going to take the $20. Then we could swap ramen for this, or we could ditch the fortune teller we just took, admittedly. This is plus 20. This is times 2. Twice 42 is more than plus 19. So I know we just took this fortune teller, but I've come around to thinking that, in fact, this is going to be better. Also, Steel Joker is uncommon for the purposes of baseball card. Now, this voucher gives us plus one hand size. I'm very happy to gain that. This has a temperance in it. We still have some blinds to go, so we'll hold that for now. Go into the next round and select this guy. So, let's see what happens if we just play 10 high here. 60,000 points for our 10 high not bad going now there's some other really good looking stuff here particularly baron is a very strong joker but i'm not going to mess with the system that we currently have in place i'm going to hold my 25 dollars do the big blind let's see let's do eight high which will go twice and the stone card along with it eight is a fibonacci number that's 165,000 points for 8 high. I'm not interested in any of that. I will take this Arcana pack, because then I can see if there's something I want to use with the Fool. Uh, nothing spectacular, really. So, when we're about to go up against the boss here, I'm just going to make that a wild card, and then we can perhaps do a wild card in the final encounter to help us win i will take a magician as well because that's just a bit of fun and so now we're going up against the amber acorn now i'm going to show you a trick and then i'm not going to use the trick to help me so when we select this button all of the cards will flip over and shuffle in the moment between pressing this button and the shuffle we can grab one of these cards and use it to our advantage because we can then put it on the right where we know where Raman wants to be. So if I do this, I know I can put Raman there. Now a new player wouldn't know this, so let's pretend Raman is in the worst possible spot over there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to reduce my gameplay speed down to 1x and I'm going to just play this pair of fours and i'm going to try and figure out where is ramen and where is red card so 1.88 is ramen 150 is banner 42 is red card so i can do this and now they should be in a slightly better position because we only got 17,000 points from that last hand which is not very strong. Now, we could play a flush here, but looking at the cards we have, we actually have a straight in 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I'm going to take this 8 and this 9 and make them lucky. 
The eight will go twice because of its red seal. I could have put... No, that's fine. Yep, this is fine. And so we'll play this. And we'll see if the scoring comes out a little better. We got lucky on that with the plus 20 malt. And now our X multipliers are in much more favorable positions. And we have scored 300,000 points for a win. So there is the seed that we started with. 9F8, FP, 6VD. And hopefully this was a good exercise in showing that knowledge of the game, making good decisions, and picking a plan and being adaptable to that plan, because we didn't really use the flushes that we thought we might very much do this at all, in fact. Uh, but yeah, a good knowledge of the game, looking for synergies where you can find them, opportunities where they knock. Hopefully that is helpful for Bellatro Overexplained. If you enjoyed that, subscribe, hit that like button, and I'll see you for more Bellatro. Cheers.